This is Luke. I'm going to take a couple minutes to walk you through the developer dashboard and how it's used. So to start with, we're going to sign in with our Firefox account. This is pointing at the development Firefox account server. So make sure you have a development Firefox account. And then once we land back on the dashboard, we now have a button that says manage your applications. I'm going to give my application a name. And then this vapid key is the same vapid uh, public key that is sent in the uh, crypto key header that's sent to the push service. So down here, I have a terminal that is playing the part of a uh, push application. So I'm going to use one of these helpers to generate all of the keys that I will need in order to send vapid push messages to the server. Now I'm going to take that vapid key, which will be sent with the push messages. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to add this push application to the dashboard. Now to make sure that you actually own this uh, vapid key that you're claiming to own, we ask you to use that vapid key to create another JSON web token. This one, um, instead of being the vapid token, is going to be a similar token, but it's going to have just a single claim of this audience, which is generated only for this verification. Um, but it is still a JSON web signature that you'll be using. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to use JWS to sign um, these claims, which is that. I'm going to sign it with the signing key that was just generated, and the algorithm is the same algorithm. Yes, 256. And this is now a JSON web token that verifies that I indeed can sign that payload of claims with the same vapid key. So I'm going to click validate. And so the key is valid. So it says that it will take up to 10 minutes to start recording. Um, in order to start recording messages, I'm going to have to send some push messages through the push service with those vapid headers. So again, I'm going to use this push application down here to do that. I'm also going to go to a push test page on the dashboard in order to create a push client and a push endpoint to receive that message. So this push test page registered a service worker along with a push manager and gave me an endpoint. And this is a subscription object. So in most cases, this would be posted back to the application server. Um, in this case, I'm just going to paste it back into my fake application server here. Um, it's going to be a subscription. And we can just load that in with JSON load s. OK. Now. Create just a little test message here. And to add uh, Vapid, I need to create, I'm going to use the Pi Vapid module. And the private key is our signing key. And this module expects it in PIM format. Now, to create the headers, I'm going to use sign, and then this is our actual vapid claims. So in this case, I'm required to have an audience and a subscription. These are just test claims. So the last bit 
is to use this PyWeb push, which takes that subscription object, includes the endpoint of where this is supposed to be sent, what message you want to send, and the headers, which now includes Vapid. So I click this, and the top right, I should see a push message come through. There it is, push test page. So that's good. Now we've got a push message sent all the way through the push stack um, using Vapid, uh, using a Vapid key that has been verified in this dashboard. Uh, so it can take a little while for it to show up, but you come back to the same app details page, screencast test app, and what I'll do is just refresh here a couple times. It can take up to 10 minutes, so I might edit this video down. There we go. So that shows the message did come through. It had the Vapid headers, so the dashboard was able to pull it out of the messages API since we are recording messages for that. Um, last thing you can do here, uh, you can delete apps. Um, when you do this, we will actually send a revoke request to the messages API. And that's pretty much it. Uh, that is how you can see messages that went through the push service with Vapid headers.